Hey, we're here with Jonathan Porter, standout quarterback for the Arlita football team. Nine of 13, 151 yards, two touchdowns. We just came here confident. We knew we had the guys to do it. We knew we had the, the line and the block. We just came out and fought hard. What's good, people? It's your boy, Coach Traplaw, licensed NFL coach, part-time referee, and full-time sales manager at Foot Locker. Today, in the Rap Game Hall of Fame, we have Jonathan Porter, aka Blueface Bleedem, baby, yeah! Sure, he might have started his career as a bit of a naughty kid, going to around five different schools. But even if he was wiling out in the classroom, he respected this in and always behaved well on the pitch. In fact, he started playing football at the ripe young age of only 10 years old, even saying himself that it was playing football that actually helped him get over his shyness as a kid. Uh, well, once I started playing football, it taught me a lot of Oh, the football. Like, what position did you play? I with a helmet on, so I oh, okay. have to be shy, you know, nobody can see. And those skills would certainly come in handy in the Thotiana period of his life. But as his skills on the pitch developed, he became the starting quarterback for the Arletta High School in the San Fernando Valley. In fact, his school coach, William Cohn, said that Blueface was easy to coach, going on to say not only could he throw the ball, but he could also run it as well. Well, that is pretty handy considering that's how football works, because if all he could do was run out onto the pitch and caress and fuck the ball, he probably would have had a problem making the cut. His coach also touchingly added that Blueface used to play the cleanup song from the Barney Show after working out in the weight room to encourage his teammates to put things away. And it was this love of Barney that actually led to a later career collaboration with the Purple Dinosaur himself, the track Purple Rag Crippin. But really though, besides his janitorial prowess, Blueface's stats on the field were truly epic. He was known for throwing the longest pass of the season in the East Valley League a whopping 85 yards. I mean, just look at some of these highlights. Welcome back to Catch of the Day. We're here watching the National Crip Bowl with Blueface in with an excellent throw. As you can see here, oh, catching plays, catching plays, oh. This is, of course, the third annual Crip Bowl. First was thrown by Snoop Dogg. We've got another excellent play here from young Blueface. Running the ball briefly before throwing it in for a long... Oh, blue face bleeding, baby. Ooh, ooh. Of course, being a football commentator, highly qualified being an Englishman, we're very big on our football, though we don't tend to pick up the ball. And, uh, God, that's a long... Oh, my God! Respect this catching, baby! You gotta respect this catching! But it's not just hands. Blueface has got some good footwork too, baby. Let's take a look at this next highlight. As you can see, he is running that rock like a young Jay-Z. Come on! Come on, Blueface! Run it! Run it! Run it! Yes! Yes! Come on, Blueface! Come on, Blueface! You can do it! Yes! Run it! Run it! Yes! Whoa! Come back! Blueface, come come back! You... Blueface's footwork is some fancy shit. I mean, this guy runs like I do when I see my ops. Come on, Blueface. Come on, Blueface. Oh, oh, touchdown, Fortiana. Touchdown. I want to see you touchdown. Oh. And Face even discussed his team scoring record on the Breakfast Club. Oh, you was that good? Yeah. What was your numbers <laughs> in school? High school? Uh, I threw for like 2,000, maybe 25 touchdowns, eight running touchdowns. Damn. Yeah. So you have fun filming the video for Tatiana then? Oh yeah, yeah, hell yeah. I like Tatiana's. And his heroic performance in the league's championship landed him a scholarship to play college ball in North Carolina. And for a second, it seemed like young Blueface was destined for greatness on the gridiron. Now, mm -hmm. did you think that you were going to have a career in football at any point? Like, oh yeah, yeah that's football? what I was pursuing my whole life. You was, played in college? Yeah. Wide receiver? Quarterback. Quarterback? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What I school? Went, uh, I went to Fayetteville State, North Carolina. Oh, Fayetteville? Mm -hmm. He chose that team because he was offered a pretty good football scholarship offer. And he says he definitely wouldn't have gone to college if he wasn't playing ball. Initially, upon joining the college team, he was a red shirt. No, I don't mean he joined the Bloods. Yeah. Could be cool with red shirt. Good one. Red shirting is actually where a freshman ball player plays their first year of games on the bench in order to train for a year and extend their eligibility to play on that football team. But when the team's fifth year senior quarterback got injured, the coach pulled Blueface off the bench and played him for a game. And this game went well. He threw two touchdowns and had no interceptions. But when the original quarterback recovered, Blueface was busted back down to the bench. Apparently this ruined an entire season of his eligibility to play college ball, effectively blowing an entire year of his scholarship in one damn game. He recovered then I wasn't playing no more so I basically burnt the year for that one game and then so I was I was disgusted right yeah I was disgusted so I was like yeah I'm out of here 
Red card on that coach right there. Someone get me a blue card, straight Crippen. And essentially at that point, Blueface dropped out of college and got back to Crippen. And from there, for a moment, it looked like Blueface's dreams of NFL stardom had fallen by the wayside. And so while he wouldn't end up playing for the Chargers, it was actually whilst visiting a music studio to drop off a Charger, that Blueface threw a Hail Mary pass and decided to have a go at rapping. He said as soon as he heard his voice played back, he knew he was gonna be a star. His tracks Dead Lokes and Respect My Crippen went viral online, and the strength of those releases led to his huge breakout track Thotiana. Peaking at number 8 on the Billboard charts and attracting remixes from heavy hitters including YG and Queen of the Thoughts Cardi B. In fact the music video for the Thotiana remix even includes a pretty accurate to life depiction of Blueface's football career, which in this rendition was tragically cut short after repeated distractions on the field by the Punani. But it turned out after all that it was that love for the Punani off the pitch that would lead Blueface to eventually joining the NFL. I know what you're thinking, Coach Law. Blueface became a rapper. He just released a new project. He ain't joined no NFL. Oh, you think I'm talking about the National Football League? No, 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 no. I'm referring to the other NFL. The NFL where Blueface has been able to dominate and become the number one ranked player in the past few years. I'm talking about the National Fuckboy League, baby. Yes, Blueface was first drafted for the National Fuckboy League after Thotiana became a certified hit in these streets. And before you knew it, thoughts from far and wide were throwing themselves at young Blueface, like wannabe rappers throwing their allowance at tattooed asses in Magic City. Fuck, gotta clean that up. And after being drafted to the league, Blueface didn't waste any time putting in that work. Arranging menages with Instagram thoughts after rolling loud, falling asleep in bed with said Thotianas, letting Thotianas rub his little Buddha belly just for luck. In fact, I hear that if you rub his belly four times, you're immune from STDs for four hours. And of course, flexing his old skills, catching 20 yard panty throws to the face. But it was thought that Blueface Baby was truly at his fuckboy prime when he announced that he had two girlfriends like some sort of offbeat R. Kelly. Hey, sometimes I wish that I had two girlfriends, but I'm not sure I've got the energy to disappoint two women at the same time. And so with Blueface putting in work, making all of the fuckboys proud, it was in summer of 2019 that he truly joined the Hall of Fame after an interview on Big Boy Show where he announced that he had smashed a thousand women in six months. How many, how many females do you think you'd knock down in the last six months? What'd you say? A thousand. No, I'm a fucker. I know. I'm a fucker. Now that's impressive considering it's a 180 day span, meaning that Blueface would have had a bedding average of five and a half women per day. And it's actually this statistic that recently landed Blueface his own sitcom with Charlie Sheen. Now judging from his four and a half million strong Instagram following, and knowing that he loves to bag chicks from the DMs, so we can determine that his follower to smash ratio is a respectable every one in four and a half thousand. And considering at the time of recording, I only have a pitiful 2,800 Instagram followers. Using Blueface's average, that entitles me to only 0.62 of a bang, AKA halfway past the tip. By the way, follow your boy at Traplor Ross on Instagram, but I'm only giving out merch, not dick. Anywho, 1,000 women in a six month time span is impressive to anybody. But let's see how he stacks up against the legends in the fuckboy hall of shame. Now Blueface's 1000 smash score puts him on par with the UK NFL legend Russell Brand who also claims to have smashed a thousand women in his career. Russell Brand famously had addictions to drink, drugs and sex, but fortunately he went through recovery and now is only addicted to sniffing his own farts on YouTube. Dennis Rodman comes in second, dribbling his way to 2000 career dippings. The famous basketballer is also well known in the NFL for being the first case of Dennis Rodman syndrome, a rare STD that causes you to break out in a crusty rash that seems to resemble an Ed Hardy t-shirt. It's impressive that he's even still in the game considering the fact that his career could be ended tragically at any time just by being too close to a magnet. Though some people have questioned the legitimacy of his number, as it's difficult to distinguish how many of those career bangs are legitimate seductions or encounters with captive North Korean thought slaves. Of course, the Rod Man is tied with Simon Cowell, who also claims to have bedded 2,000 women in his career. But that is an incredibly modest finger and that number does rise all the way up to 10,000 if you also include men allegedly. Mick Jagger's leathery old pork sword slides in next with claims of over 4,000 season smash hits. And he's still knocking up chicks at the dusty old age of 73. Reportedly being bi has helped him push those numbers up considerably, considering that it allows him to just sub in for whichever team is getting the most action that night. Apparently he even hooked up with David Bowie and Andy Warhol in what must have been the most creatively exhausting threesome in history. Next up, he calls it tiger blood, but the doctors call it HIV. It's the official Hollywood fuckboy of the 90s, Charlie Sheen. He initially caught the attention of the league having racked up over 5,000 notches in his bedpost. But unfortunately he was actually disqualified from the Hall of Shame for using performance enhancing drugs. But he's still a legend in the league and he was supposedly so good in bed that his partners used to call him the machine. 
I assume that the machine they were referring to was the Google Embarrassmatron 5000, the latest development in DeepMind AI technology that can ruin your career with the efficiency of a thousand R. Kelly's. Next up is wrestling legend Ric Flair, who claimed that he had smashed over 10,000 ladies. Not surprising being the first athlete whose 30 for 30 documentary was actually a porno. Woo! But the undisputed champion of the NFL Hall of Shame is none other than basketball player Wilt Chamberlain, who claims to have smashed over 20 thousand women over the course of his life. Now this is a pretty unbelievable figure, but I can assure you this has been verified by the league. Reportedly, Wilt Chamberlain actually used a day planner to record the number of women that he'd hooked up with on a daily basis. He determined the 20,000 figure based on a batting average of 2.3 per day, which he cut in half in order to be conservative, and then applying a multiplier based on starting his career at age 15. But there is one important thing to remember in all of this. Whether it's Wilt Chamberlain's wild life having smashed 20,000 women, Blueface smashing a feeble 1,000 in six months, or your boy Coach Law Ross finessing a humble 0.6 of a bang out of an Instagram thought for pure pity. Sleeping with as many people as you possibly can is a hollow goal and no way to live a happy life. And Wilt Chamberlain himself even discussed some of the empty feelings he had about his sexual escapades in one of the last interviews before his death. With all of you men out there who think that having a thousand different ladies is pretty cool, I have learned in my life I found that having one woman a thousand different times is much more satisfying. And so whilst we admire him and crown him with the title of 2019's Rookie of the Year in the National Fuckboy League, let's not aspire to be like Blueface. We don't all have to live like a rapper. So don't run around trying to recreate an unrealistic life that you've seen a rapper portray, running through as many thoughts as they possibly can, because it's very possible that you might not find that fulfilling and neither do they. And me personally, there's only one award that I'm really out here trying to get. Nice guy of the year, baby. Yay. Free merch. I'm calling plays on anybody that doesn't follow your boy Traplaw Ross on Instagram because I am giving away my t-shirts. So if you're not following me on at Traplaw Ross over on Instagram, then I'm issuing you with a five video ban. No more of my content until you go and follow your boy, go and like my merch giveaway post and comment your country, your size and what item you want. I'm gonna do a whole bunch of giveaways over the course of the Christmas season to show everybody how much I appreciate y'all and also to try and get some of my dope ass merch which you can buy at traplaw.com into as many people's hands as possible. For everybody that's bought something in the store so far, thank you very much. Bless y'all, I appreciate y'all. You mean the world to me. If you haven't bought anything in the store, bless you too, because you watch this and you at least got to this point. So I F with you, heavy. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for supporting. You guys are the gang gang. I love you very much.